Hello, in this video I want to talk about creating the stylized trees for Unreal 5 with Nanite enabled. I want to say that with Unreal 5, this is still early access, so things might change in the future, and also Nanite doesn't always work that well with thinner surface, but I will explain a bit more in the video as we go. So let's start here in Houdini by making the tree. So here we have our node network, I'm going to create a geometry network, and we're going to jump in here into uh, the geometry then. So for making a tree, the side effects the lab tools already got you covered. So if you would type in tree, I already have three tools available. So I have the basic tree, I have a specific tree tool that could basically sort of like stack nodes to create a tree. And I'm going to choose the basic one, which is just a quick tree. So this will create a basic tree uh, for me. If you don't have labs installed, go here to window and go here to side effects labs. So this will help you install side effects labs. So we have here this tree tool and we also need to have a, an input. So we're going to draw a line to use as input. So here, let's then draw. So I'm going to select my handle and let's draw a simple line like so. So let's plug that in and this should calculate a tree now like this. So again, if you're not happy with the tree, you can go here to the stroke and delete them and draw another one like this. So this is then my tree. Now let's make it a bit more stylized. So you could already try and import this into Nanite. That might work as well since again, like each leaf is basically an individual part here. So that could work as well. But I want to have like this more stylized look with also like this round clusters for each branch here. So the main work I'm going to do here is around the leaf. So I'm going to split the leaves apart from the trunk. So in here we have actually the output to change this to leaves. So we can output only the branch or the leaves so we can choose that. So when we have that, I want to then create a shrink wrapper. This will basically then sort of like a con convex hull of that shape. And what I want to do with this is remesh it. So we have some more geometry to work with. And I actually want to project this back into the original shape. So I'm going to use a ray node and project this back to the original shape. So to make this work, we can also set the method to minimum distance and it will project like that. So this is mainly to get a more interesting shape. As you could see, like the shrink wrap is like getting a lot of rid of details. And here we get some sort of like silhouette back with converting that back and forth. So the ge geometry and topology right now is probably not perfect at all. So we're going to use a voxel to make sure we have some proper geometry back again. And I'm also going to blur this a lot. So we're going to go to smoothing. I'm going to blur this. So this is then my end result. You also don't have to go too super high in poly count right now. So I'm going to leave the default settings and this, this is okay to work with. So the next thing is I want to think about building certain clusters or certain areas where I would like to have my clusters or spheres of uh, foliage or leaves. So I'm going to actually fracture the geometry. So I'm going to use a Vorian fraction node. And with that, I'm going to use a scatter node to define how many clusters I want. So let's place a scatter node. Here we can say how much, and we're going to probably want this to be quite low, like eight. And we're going to fill in our geometry and our points for fracturing. So now we have that result. And if we would go here to this icon, we will basically now visualize where the clusters are. So here I will have a small batch of leaves, then here one, here one, and here one. So these will all be then small clusters of leaves. So for the next step, we want to loop over each cluster. So we're going to have a loop, and it's basically looping over each connected piece. So these are actually all separated because of the fracturing. So we're going to plug in our loop, and we should normally now see eight loops. So if I would now take a look, 
I only have this piece now. Now let's convert this into a sphere shape. Now there are a couple ways and the most easiest way is taking a bound node. This will calculate the bounds. But what we can do here is that set the bound type to a sphere. And now we have a sphere. We could also click here accurate bounds, might be interesting. But this is basically what we have. So here we have our shape and it's sort of like creating a big sphere around that. It's not perfect as you could see here, but definitely usable. So we have that sphere. And what we notice with that sphere is this is no geometry. So we actually gonna have to use a convert node to convert that back into actual geometry and polygons. So now we actually have polygons. So if we now play around with that level of detail, we're gonna now basically move up the slider and increase the detail. So it doesn't have to be super high. This is good, more than good enough. And if I now fill in this in my output, I should now have something like this. So each fractured geometry that I had here is now basically converted into a sphere. So again, there are definitely other ways of doing this, but this is a quite simple approach by just using the bounce node. Now, one other thing I want to do here is there might be sometimes too large in shape. So I'm going to use a peak node. And with that node, I can quickly sort of like shrink this. As you can see, I could quickly make this a bit smaller. So let's make it a bit smaller. Like so, you could also try to use the transform node, but the peak node will work here as well. So as you could see, it's just like making that smaller. So that works fine. So now comes the interesting part where we're going to actually create the leaf system. So now we're going to scatter and align here. So don't use the normal scatter, but the scatter with aligning. We're going to fill in here our inputs and it should automatically scatter some points. Now, interesting here is that we're going to have to change a couple values here. I want to have the coverage to be fully one, so it should be one. And we're going to play around with the minimum and maximum ranges of these. So I'm going to lower this. So we have a minimum value of somewhere like 0 0.2 and maximum of 0.1. And then our uniform scale, I probably want a lot of different leaves, so the uniform scale should, should be quite low. So if I bring this to like 0.2, we should now see a lot of points. And now let's already try placing a leaf here. So if we just type in leaf, I can actually already have a simple leaf from the three tools. So let's use a simple leaf here. And you should see something like this. I can play around with the parameters to make it more different. Like I can change the shape to be more, a bit more like this. But this is fine. Also topology wise, I think this is more than good enough. Then we want to copy the leaf on the points. So copy the points. So we plug in our geometry and the points. So now we should be able to see this result where we have a lot of these leaves on the points. So first of all, I noticed that my leaves are quite small and also the orientation is wrong. So let's start by scaling them up by just placing a transform here so transform and we can just scale it so here we have our pivot point already in a good position so we can just scale this to maybe let's start with five or six for now and you should see a better result like this let's fix the uh, orientation so they are now like perfectly following that sphere shape which could be nice if you want that but i don't necessarily want that so in the scatter and align node, there's options for the orientation. So we're going to open here the alignment and we're going to play around with the attributes here. So what could be a good idea is adding, for example, a normal node here. Um, and then we can use this in our points. So we have like this, so the direction of where the, the leaf could face. So like this and then we, we are able to use this then in the forward factor so we're going to use attribute and we're just going to fill in normal so already this this might help 
with some of the orientation, but not fully. The next step would be then using here the blend with normal. So enable this. And you can already see that this is working as expected. I expected the leaves to be like this. So they're sort of like hanging a bit like that. And I can always also like blend here with the sphere. As you can see, I can, I can blend them. So if you want them to be a little bit lower, maybe let's put it around like this, 0.7. And I, li I quite like the result here of that. And this is basically my leaf system. So I could go back here and play it around with, for example, the scale. Or I could also go back and play around with the scale of the scatterer. So the scatterer itself will output scaling attributes like here and orientation. So if we're going to go with point 0.1, we're going to see that we have a lot more of them. So since we are using nanite, we can probably go with this higher amount. So this is the primitive amount I currently have. So let's bring in our uh, branch. So merge, and we're going to merge the leaves and our branch we had here from our split node. So this is then my tree. And maybe let's uh, place the transform and move this back up. So I move this a bit up like so. So it's like more sitting on top of that. And that's looking pretty good to me. Uh, we can also add some more vertex colors. So we could drop a color node here and make this, for example, a bit brownish. Like this. And let's already probably bring this then into game engine. Uh, if you want to triangulate this before bringing it in, you can use the divide node. And in here, we can set the divide option. So it should automatically triangulate everything, as you could see. So we can then, for exporting, use the FPX node. So here, ROP FPX node, plugging in our geometry, and then set it path and naming. So when that is done, you can just press save and then jump into Unreal to take a first look there. So here in Unreal 5, I made a basic scene with just some lights, plain skylights. So I could just view the model. So let's import that model. So when importing this, we're going to, of course, build a nanite mesh. So we might going to make sure that's enabled. And since I'm using vertex color, I'm also going to here click replace vertex color. So we're going to make sure it's up to date. And furthermore, I also like to disable here the import of materials. Uh, and you should not be worrying about anything else. So this is imported. And now my tree is imported. So here is my tree. Uh, and I made one mistake is that I forgot to set actually the final scale. So in Houdini, what you often need to do is place a transform node and multiply by 100. So 100 is actually the scaling difference. So that's why I often just do is multiply 100 times and should be good to go. So let's just click save. Then in, then in our geometry, we can just click re-import mesh. And now that it's re-imported, we actually have a better size of the tree. And now another thing, I can also quickly add a vertex material here. I think I have some in my projects like this. So this is not the special materials, just using vertex color directly in the maps here. And this is then the result that I have, so the tree. So of course, a couple of things are not supported with nanites, like certain opacities and things like that. So they are currently not working. If I would go here to nanites, triangles, you could see that this is all triangles. So each leaf is actual geometry, as you could see, or as, we, as you saw in Houdini. So it should be okay, -ish. even from far away, it should be decent looking. Uh, one issue with these could be like the overdraw. So let's go into overdraw. And you can see that we already see a little bit of like higher intensities of overdraw. So by overdraw, Nanite tries to remove all the triangles. It doesn't need to render in the scene. But by overdraw, it means that there are a lot of different triangles or 
polygons stacked up on each other because that's causing some issues with nanite that if you have too much of these that might cause performance issues so again if i would start copying this tree around that might actually cause issues since again i have like a lot of different like holes in these areas and i would often like have to render more geometry to see the final result so here if we uh, go back to overdraw you can see that there's quite some overdraw here so as other example here i made this scene a while ago and this is then the rock scene so you could see that this overdraw i mean you see don't much overdraw here so if i go back to that here this is the scene that i made a while ago with basically the triplanar projection in houdini and let's jump into houdini and try to lower that overdraw a bit more so if we go into our houdini one of the things i want to add is for example here our base shape so i want to merge this with our network so merge this over here and let's use that so this could help a bit not necessarily a lot but it might be helpful and let's also give this some vertex color since we want to blend this with our uh, leaf so let's give that green color maybe we could just do a color picker with that color maybe we could color pick that darker here like so so it blends a bit and then another thing we could do is actually play around with the leaf so what if we lower the scale to maybe four or five here and also maybe push it a bit forward so it's not necessarily intersecting with that sphere so these are just things you could try to play around with like you could try play around with a lot of different other methods to see if this impacts nanite so let's see if this helps so let's save this and let's re-import that mesh to see if we have some better results and as you can see this actually helped so there is still like some like this orange color but it's like less glowy like it did before so you could see that this is now a bit better i mean it's not perfect but it's definitely better uh, and it's in its reducing of the overdraw and visual visually it doesn't look that bad it still holds up pretty well but again you could play around with different settings and parameters because this is all quite new to everyone so there might be some techniques or methods people come up with to actually reduce overdraw on certain geometry so here you can see that this is going to be actually pretty decent so also we could copy paste this now a lot so i have a lot of like 60 fps so we could copy paste this multiple times and it should be fine and this is basically how i created the procedural tree for that scene you saw a small thing that i again want to talk about with nanite is for the grass so the scene i created was all nanite i wanted to do this as a stress test to see what nanite could do so this is definitely not a workflow i would recommend right now but definitely worth trying things out like that so if i would now grab one of my grasses here like this is basically pure geometry like i created this from an image in houdini with the trace node and again what one of the downside with this is again the overdraw so let me quickly open that other scene here so here i have that scene that i created from that shot so here we have the trees and the grass so again each grass is an actual model with geometry this is not the plain car this is an actual geometry shape that i created even the flowers are real geometry they are not playing parts or anything like that they are actually geometry in their shape the only thing that is not nanite is actually the clouds since this is an opacity plane so that's not supported so if i go here into the overdraw you will see that this will go quite dramatic as you can see like we have a lot of this glowing area and again it needs to render all the polygons here that i have from the grass in the distance to actually have something that looks visually decent because it needs all that information to make a good render here so that's why you should not for example do the grass 
again, like performance wise, I'm going to a lower FPS around 35, maybe 40 sometimes. And it is not, and this is also not even like going full screen. So you can see that this has a big impact. This overdraw has a big impact on that FPS. Like even another example here, like if I would just grab a shape like a box and which kill is up like so. I mean, you could probably like see my FPS going up higher and higher because again, it doesn't need to render the geometry that's behind the box. So overdraw, you see, it doesn't need to render what's behind the box. It only needs to render uh, what is visible in my screen. So yeah, that's it about this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about how you could build something for Unreal 5 with Nanite enabled. These are again some early experimentations and I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for watching.